Hi, thanks for joining us. My name's Madeline. Today I'm sitting down with the director of our national security program here at ASPE, Dr. Isaac Kafir. Thanks so much for joining me, Isaac. Thank you. So today we're going to be talking about the upcoming parliamentary elections in Iraq, scheduled for May 12. Mm. Could you just start by giving us a little, a brief background to the elections, specifically the different groups that are running? So um, the Iraqi parliament has 329 seats. They'll all be contested. Uh, there are four main uh, groups operating at the moment. So um, it, there is the Nasser uh, coalition, which is being led by the current prime minister, Abadi. Then you've got the state of law coalition, which is led by the former prime minister, who is now also the vice president, and that's Maliki. Uh, and then you've got two other organizations, the Badar organization and the Fatah organization. So the, it's, it's a... It's a confluence of entities. Yeah, absolutely. So um, in 2016, 2006, mm. sorry, um, the US arguably mismanaged the Iraq elections by throwing their support behind Nuri al-Maliki. Mm -hmm. um, he then went on to run a highly sectarian government, which mm -hmm. arguably was one of the contributing factors to the rise of Islamic State. So I guess essentially my question is, are we going to break the cycle in 2018 with um, Haider al-Abadi? Uh, no, Iraq has become uh, a fully-fledged sectarian entity. Um, uh, there's just, just no two ways around it. Increasingly, we are seeing seats in cabinet or in government or uh, even in, within the bureaucracy allocated on the basis of one sectarian affiliation. So, uh, if anything, we have moved more and more and more towards sectarianism uh, in, uh, in Iraq. It's a promising answer. <laughs> So how prepared do you think is the US administration and its allies like Australia moving forward in terms of um, potential outcomes with this election? So there's little evidence that the United States is prepared. Um, you know, they're still debating as to whether they should continue to support the uh, Iraqi military. Uh, the Americans are paying the lion's share of, um, of building and sustaining the Iraqi army. Uh, there is some confusion as to whether that will continue under the current administration. Um, and there's also some various challenges in terms of ir Iranian um, involvement, engagement, interference e within the Iraqi political system, which is then also influencing the popular mobilization units, which are the militias who had been fighting the Islamic State. <laughs> so, in light of all these possible outcomes, um, can you just offer some reflections on what U.S. military involvement might look like in Iraq moving forward? So, uh, U.S. military engagement is probably going to be dependent as to the presence of the Islamic State in sort of in, in Iraq. So, uh, at the moment, they seem the the, um, the Islamic State is on the back foot. So, it remains unclear as to how much of America's involvement will remain. Uh, there are about 9,000 uh, US soldiers currently in mm -hmm. Iraq. There is enormous opposition towards uh, their remaining uh, there. Um, and most of the groups that I mentioned are very hostile towards continuous American presence. Mm -hmm. Okay. So speaking of Islamic State, mm -hmm. um, a few weeks ago, um, their spokesman made a media announcement yeah. for the first time in about 10 months, I yes. think it was. And in it, he explicitly referenced the upcoming elections um, yes. as, you know, as sort of a target for, for um, you know, he called anyone who collaborates mm -hmm. with the Iraqi government with regards to these elections as a potential target. Yes. So do you think that this could deter people from, do you think this will have any effect on the outcome or, of the elections it, next it week? could have an outcome. I, I think we have to rephrase what the, these elections are about. They're primarily about the issue of corruption. The Iraqi state has become um, uh, highly corrupt uh, and, and it seems to be as if corruption is driving much of the conversation. Mm -hmm. So people who, for example, maybe four months ago weren't uh, as you know, where significant political actors, people like Muqtadir al-Sadr, have now all of a sudden become major players because he's running on a nationalist campaign. So, for example, his coalition has the Communist Party, it has Shiite, it's, you know, it's a really broad brush uh, entity, but he's very much driving off on the premise of, I'm going to fight corruption. So, there's definitely going to be security concerns, but it's also the fact that many Iraqis don't feel that a number of their politicians have been representing particularly well, so they might just be disillusioned and simply say, well, what's the point of going to vote if it's simply going to bring the same old corrupt elite back into power? Mm. 
So I guess my final question would be, um, given all the different groups mm -hmm. that, are, that are working at, on the ground at the moment and the different parties yeah. involved, where would you recommend our listeners go to to find sort of more information on this sort of succinct summaries? Okay. So um, uh, the, the online magazine uh, El Monitor is very good. Uh, obviously the strategist, we know yeah. we do have a number of, uh, of blogs uh, that appear on it. Uh, the Middle East Eyes is also quite good. Uh, Arab News uh, uh, will also give uh, a fair assessment. Perfect. Well, Thank thanks you. so much for chatting with me today, Isaac. Thank you. Thanks so much for joining us today. If you want to know more about this topic, you can follow the Strategist blog and also you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter at aspie underscore org.